Good evening. My name is Kay Autumn, and I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of Benton and Franklin Counties. The League is a nonpartisan group. We never support or oppose any candidate. In presenting these forums, our goal is to provide an opportunity for the voters to become better informed about the people who are running for public office. This event is being streamed, uh, live streamed on social media, specifically on the City of Richland's Facebook page. It's being recorded to be replayed on Richland City View Television Channel 192, and it will also be available to uh, view on YouTube. Tonight, we're going to be hearing from the candidates who are seeking positions in the 8th Legislative District for State Senator, Representative Position 1 and Position 2. We're also going to hear from the County Commissioner candidates and the Benton County Coroner candidates. Before we really get into the heart of the forum, I would like to make a few thank yous. I want to thank Mike Charbonneau, who is, I have to read, he's the Cable Communications Coordinator for the City of Richland, and John Funfar, the Communications Program Manager for the City of Pasco, and Bob Kreider, a local businessman who's always willing to help, for their assistance in presenting tonight's forum. For many years, these gentlemen have uh, donated their time and their expertise to presenting these forums so that a wider audience can enjoy them and we very much appreciate our working relationship with them. Also thank you to Mike who made the arrangements to have the forum here and to the Richland School District for letting us use this facility. So. We'll get back to the 8th District races. We're going to use for the whole night the following format. Each candidate may make a two-minute opening statement. We'll then move to a question and answer uh, period with a one and a half minute time limit on responses. All candidates in a particular race will answer the same questions, alternating who goes first. The League has prepared questions but we're also taking questions from the audience. Uh, be sure to mark what race your question is for. Make it that um, both candidates can answer and nothing of a personal nature. Um, I'd like to point out, this is our first forum this year that we have had all the candidates attend. At the other ones, we were missing somebody here and somebody there. So. Um, that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, candidates, I'd point out our timer to you. She'll hold up a sign when you have 15 seconds left, and then she'll hold up a stop sign. You don't need to stop speaking mid-sentence, but please wrap up your thought when you see the 15 seconds. I'll now introduce the candidates who are running for state senator in the 8th district. They are Sharon Brown, and Leo Perales. Um, I think we're going in the order of how people filed. So Ms. Brown, would you please make your opening statement? Thank you, Kay. And I thank you for the opportunity to be here. I thank Carrie Call for the founding the League of Women Voters in 1920. Just six months before the passage of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, giving women the right to vote. For almost 100 years, the League has encouraged, informed, and active participation in government. As a woman and mother, I took the call to heart for active participation in government and was elected to the Kennewick City Council. Then in 2013, I embraced the chance to serve in our state Senate. From day one in the Senate, I have fought hard against wasteful spending, reckless taxes, out of control budgets, and burdensome regulations on small businesses. But as I gained experience and the respect of my peers, I have never failed to make a point of using my positions in leadership 
and on the Budget Committee to help protect the most vulnerable citizens of our state. I'm especially proud of the bills I've passed and the funding I've secured for suicide prevention and other mental health challenges, for families touched with developmental disabilities, for expansion of the Meals on Wheels program for our seniors, and for anti-human trafficking programs. I am also proud to say that I have never, never missed a vote, a single vote in the Senate and have upheld a 100% attendance record. Some say it's better to elect Democrats in our state's Democratic controlled legislature, but I want to emphasize that every bill that I have gotten passed into law had to make it past a Democrat governor, a Democrat House, and last session, a Democrat Senate. My most recent suicide prevention bill was even praised by Governor Inslee as one of the best bills of the entire session. I am asking that you please give me the chance to return to the Senate to continue fighting for fiscal as well as humanitarian responsibility. I will lead the effort to find sensible ways to adequately fund infrastructure improvements, education, and our mental health crisis without new taxes or rating our rainy day fund. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Perales. Awesome, great. Thank you, just a disclaimer, I've been sick for like a month and I had a lot of tea today and I have a, a holes in my mouth, so hopefully that doesn't mess up me talking tonight. So I apologize first and foremost for that. Um, but again, my name's Leo Perales. I'm running for the 8th Lady State Senate and I have a track record of community service and leadership in this community. I'm known to get things done. Currently, I sit on the Benton County Planning Commission as vice chair. I'm also the vice chair of the Kennewick Housing Authority. Um, and I, I just believe my leadership is greatly needed in, in Olympia. I'm running for state senator because I believe in this district. I also believe in the Democratic Party and know that our values are one and the same, even though I know I live in a red area. There is so much work to be done, and we can't get issues resolved when, when we play the same old politics with the same old players and hope to achieve a different result. Change doesn't come from Olympia. It goes to Olympia. By putting the residents of the, eighth, of the 8th OD first, we will fight for the issues that will unite us, not divide us. We will fight for universal health care. We will fight for investments in our education system and our communities to keep them strong. We will fight for an economy that is built from the middle class out. We will fight to protect workers' rights and, and ensure that large corporations play by the same rules as everybody else. We will fight for the many families who are struggling. We will fight for an education system where higher education is affordable and where our teachers receive fair pay. Together, we will fight for common sense policies that benefit everyone because politics isn't about left or right. It's about improving people's lives. Vote for common sense for once and please elect me so I can go to Olympia and bring some common sense for change. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to questions. <clears throat> Here's our first question, and Ms. Brown, you'll go first. The partisanship of national politics seems to have colored much of our day-to-day -day interactions lately. If elected, re-elected, will you be willing to try to work toward compromise with the quote-unquote other party and toward building consensus within the legislature? Thank you, and whoever asked that question, that is a great question because that's what I've practiced since I've been elected. I have always reached across the aisle, whether we were in the majority or in the minority, because I think it's important that we hear from everyone. I really want to represent the interests of my district, and that's what I really strive to pursue, to make sure that the Tri-Cities is adequately represented in Olympia. That's a loaded question. Um, you know, and I'm a young guy, and, and politics today is just, it, it almost seems like it's not a fit for a guy like myself. Because I really do believe angry is over. We have angry people on the left, angry, angry people on the right. And I also believe that, we, we, that we've uh, ceded too much ground to men with microphones, women with microphones, you know, slogans on red hats, pink hats. You know, I, when I go to Olympia, I'm going to work, I don't believe in an aisle. Again, I'm going to Olympia to represent everybody in this room. My brothers and sisters from the Republican Party, from the Libertarian Party, it doesn't matter. 
because I, I really do believe in a set of core values, justice for all, leaving things better, um, leaving things better than how we found them. You know, making sure everyone plays by the same rules. And, and again, another issue that I've seen is that we've nationalized, just like the question asked. You know, when people look at a Democrat like I am, you know, oh, he wants to raise our taxes. You know, it's just insane, and I don't get it. So please listen to what I have to say tonight, and, and I think we all need to give the other party a chance if we're ever going to get things done. Thank you. Speaking of taxes, our next question will address that. Um, this is a combination of a league question and an audience question. According to recent national surveys, Washington ranks first in the nation as the most regressive, having the most regressive tax system in the country. Um, how do you respond to this and what, if anything, would you like to see changed? Specifically, there is a question from the audience, are you in favor of a state income tax? You know, on, on the campaign show, I've talked a lot about taxes because I believe we need a total tax overhaul. And I know which study you're talking about it comes out every single year saying that Washington State is the most regressive, has the most regressive tax system here, here in the nation. Um, and then that's in regards to the sales tax and hitting people, um, you know, 17,000 or the, the, the lower income individuals hard. You know, I think we need to start looking into things as an income tax, and that's not a radical idea. The, the, even the Washington Policy Center, Washington Policy Center, says that that's, you're able to do that, but it has to be very limited and it can't be targeted. I'm not in favor of a of a head tax like over in Seattle. I, I don't believe we should target people for for working hard. Everyone works hard, but for having a little bit more money, it, it, we need to change our philosophy when it comes to taxes. I believe we should also look at a capital capital gains tax uh, by implementing something like that we would probably get around $700 million uh, according, according to some studies. Um, I believe we should reform the B&O tax and perhaps implement a corporate tax. Again, we need to change the way we look at taxes and look at them as investments. Um, I also believe we need to evaluate programs and cut them. Just because a program exists doesn't mean we need to fund them. Uh, we need to pr uh, pass fiscal measures and make sure that the taxes that are going towards programs are actually being utilized correctly. Um, and then any, and, and then if we get any unprojected revenue like we did in this last during this last session, we should be put that money back into the rainy day fund. But I really believe we need to take a serious look when it comes to taxes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you. No, I'm absolutely not in favor of establishing a capital gains tax and or an income tax. Uh, first of all, a capital gains tax is cyclical. You can't count on a capital gains tax if you're going to try and balance a budget. I've been one of the budget writers. You need to have devices in place that you can absolutely count on. We are in a time in the state of extraordinary revenue. We have incredible revenue growth. This is not the time. This is not the place. This is not the hour to start talking about additional taxes. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> okay, our next question, Ms. Brown, you'll go first. Many school districts in Washington saw teacher strikes at the beginning of the school year. Many districts then saw significant increases in teacher salaries. Do you think that the funding for such increases can be maintained? Why or why not? We did have incredible growth with regard to teacher salaries in this state. And I have to say, I am proud to say that there is no teacher in this state that's getting less than $50,000 a year. That, in my book, is a, is a living wage. You can absolutely survive on that. I've heard it said by my opponent and other people that teachers are living in their cars. There's no need for a teacher to be living in their car and today in Washington State. I'm very proud of the work that we've done on McCleary, which is the lawsuit that led us to having to fund education, K through 12 education. I believe we've done an extraordinarily good job of meeting our obligations, so much so that the Washington State Supreme Court has agreed with us that we have met our obligation under that. And as a sister, um, or as a, as a woman who has two sisters that are 
uh, both teachers and being the daughter of a father who is a teacher, I understand and I sympathize what teachers have gone through. I've seen both my sisters go out and buy school supplies out of their own pockets. I understand that. But I believe that Washington State has absolutely adequately funded K-12 through education and teacher salaries. Okay, thank you. Um, no, I, I don't think the legislature is done with this um, McCleary issue. I, I really feel like that the legislature is still in contempt of court, regardless of what that judge says. Um, currently, our, 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 our education system is still ranked 20th in the whole nation. If I go to Olympia, I want to see that at least go into the top 10. And again, really, the math doesn't really add up. And that just, to me, and, and when I go to Olympia, I want to see greater transparency when it comes to the budget. Democrats and Republicans are both to blame in, in the secrecy of that budget. I mean, they got it at noon and they voted on it by 4 o'clock. You can't go through thousands of pages to figure out where that money's going to go and, and, and if that formula for those salaries is going to work. Now the levy swap is going to be an issue because a lot of school districts, because a lot of school districts are losing that money, and so only time will tell. But more than likely, we're going to have to see modifications. Um, the regional, uh, the regionalization pay is also going to hurt certain school districts. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of issues in uh, with with school districts retaining certain teachers. I, I've heard in Walla Walla is going to be hit hard with that. You know, you can see teachers from there moving up here. Um, we already have that issue right now between Richland, Kennewick, and Pasco. Again, the, this McCleary de decision is not over, and we're going to be seeing um, many issues to come. And, and the, the legislature is going to have to modify a lot of things that they did during this last session. Thank you. Okay, this is our last question for uh, the state Senate candidates. Mr. Perales, please go first. How will you support small businesses and economic development at the local level if you're in the state position? Well, local, local and small businesses are the engine of our economy. You know I, know, I know the Democratic Party is not the best when it comes to that, but I'm not, I guess, the typical Democrat. I want to see local businesses expand and I also want to give them exemptions, but there has to be sunsets. My opponent likes to just hand out tax exemptions like they're candy. I, I, don't, I don't approve of that. I believe we can incentivize businesses to expand and grow, but we need to ask, what are you doing for our community? Are you investing in the future? Right now, we see a lot of tax exemptions when it comes to small businesses to large corporations. They're not investing in the future of Washington. They're not, inv they're not investing in the kids of Washington and their education. I mean, we have we have entities like Microsoft who are having to ask for visas to bring people in. People, individuals from the 8th LD from the state of Washington should be filling those types of jobs. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Well, for the record, I don't have the ability to hand out tax incentives. Wow, wouldn't that be something if I could, from my little seat here in the Tri-Cities, just pick and choose what businesses I think are worthy of having tax incentives. Wow, that would be a fantastic day for us in the Tri-Cities. I have to work within the parameters of my uh, fellow legislators in Olympia. And it is very frustrating because a lot of times legislators in Olympia want to pick and choose who gets to be winners and losers in the state of Washington. And all too often, those winners and losers, uh, the losers tend to be Eastern Washington and the winners tend to be Western Washington. So I am a strong voice and advocate for businesses. I've worked a lot with our local businesses. I convene community conversations and roundtables where we sit down and we discuss what are the biggest hurdles that you have in your business today? And I listen to them and I take that back with me to Olympia to try and solve some of the problems that they've brought to light. One of the biggest problems they have are all the rules and regulations that exist out there for businesses and sometimes duplicative amongst different agencies. Sometimes you'll have the Department of Ecology will have a whole bunch of rules and regs that will actually be opposite of what the Department of Labor and Industries does. So what I I've done is I've convened these community conversations and have brought in the agency directors to see how we can mitigate all of these problems that these small businesses are having. Thank you. And now, if you would please give us your closing statement. It, it has been an absolute privilege and an honor to represent you in Olympia. 
I have really appreciated getting to know many of the people here in this audience, and it is great to see such a packed house here tonight because this is what we need to get back to. We need to get back to having civil discourse. Huge shout out to those kids that are sitting here. Whether you were here by choice or because you had to, thanks for being a part of the process. You guys are our future. I love talking to young kids. I love going into the coffee shops and asking the baristas, you know, what's really on your mind? What's, what's driving you crazy about politics today? It's great to talk to kids. Really, stay engaged is my big plea to you guys. Don't let this just be a 25 pointer that you're here to get your points. Please continue to be engaged because we really need to hear from you. You're our future and I'm glad you're part of it. And like I said, it has just been an honor to represent you in Olympia. It's been great to be able to bring home a whole bunch of mental health resources right here in the Tri-Cities. And I'm gonna continue to work on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perales. Again, I want to thank the league. Uh, I always love these things. Uh, I always, I always like to sit in the audience and give the incumbents the workouts, but I guess I'm the one getting the workout tonight. One thing that I do know is that is constant is change. This district is changing. It, it's starting to look a lot more, more like myself and like the kids that she pointed out to. You know, Latinos don't represent that, not even 3% of the elected uh, positions here in the state. That needs to change. I also, we need, I believe we need to have younger individuals. I'm not too much younger than the uh, kids, kids, middle schoolers sitting in the front row. We need more innovative, uh, innovation over there in Olympia. We need more change. I just don't see us changing unless we send different representatives over there. I mean, she's had a great run. And I want to point out something that I said online or I said during the Kona thing was, I think you should be sending a Democrat over there because the Democrats are going to have a trifecta. That did sound a little arrogant. I will say that, and I got, put, and I got called out on it. But when I go to Olympia, I represent every single one in this room. I will sit down with everyone in this room. You guys can call the office, and I will answer the phone. That's the difference between myself and the incumbents that we have over in Olympia. So again, my name is Leo Perales. I'm running for the 8th LD State Senate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and let's, um, my next line is, let's thank both of these candidates for being with us tonight. Um, I'd like the audience to please stay seated as all four candidates who are running for state representative come forward. <clears throat> 